Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let me just, first of all, thank you both for being here, but the fact that nearly a third of women veterans experience sexual assault or harassment while serving our country in uniform is really staggering. And unsurprisingly, we know that military sexual trauma is a significant cause of, of mental health issues for these women. In fact, women who are survivors of military sexual trauma are nine times more likely to develop PTSD than other women veterans. There was a 2018 VHA directive that requires all VA facilities to have a designated coordinator to help veteran survivors of military sexual trauma access mental health care and other resources. But in my home state of Washington, the Puget Sound VA, which treats, by the way, more than 65,000 veterans, doesn't does not have a full-time person in this position, which seems notable for a facility of that size and a position that's so important. So Dr. Miller, I wanna ask you, what steps is VA doing uh, and taking to make sure that all VA facilities, including Puget Sound VA, have enough resources to assist and reach out to survivors of military sexual trauma? Thank you for the question, Senator. I agree with you 100%, as does the VA and suicide prevention that addressing military sexual trauma is critically important and a key component of suicide prevention. Exactly what you said, there is increased risk with regard to suicide in this area. We at the national level have a policy in place, requirements at the local level regarding the very points of contact that you mentioned. We receive regular reports on a quarterly basis regarding staffing, and then we work with uh, local facilities through the VISN with regard to gaps so or is, shortages. So is um, my VA facility gonna get a coordinator or not? Your VA facility should be receiving a message stating, tell us what the plan is to fulfill this FTE uh, 1.0. When will that occur? I don't know the exact timing of that vis-a-vis -vis the current date. Uh, I would imagine by the end of the quarter or the start of the quarter, but I'd be happy to check okay, on the if specifics. If you can get back to me and tell me specifically when that's gonna happen, I'd appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, let me ask about homelessness. There's 33,000 veterans experiencing homeless in the U.S., 1,500 of them in my state. Veterans who've experienced homelessness are four times more likely than other veterans to attempt suicide. And I know the VA has made progress in reducing the number of veterans who lack housing, but we also need to make sure that we are utilizing our knowledge of risk factors and engaging with these veterans to help prevent them from experiencing homelessness in the first place. So Dr. Miller, what is the VA doing right now to reach out to veterans who are experiencing homelessness and provide them with the mental health services that they need? I think that uh, the answer to that question, ma'am, starts with identifying where are veterans at the highest risk for suicide within that uh, particular situation. And what we've learned is that veterans are at the highest risk for suicide 30 to 60 days prior to homelessness status or losing their home. So a big part of the issue for us is identifying veterans who are at high risk. How do you do that? I think that it's an issue of uh, measuring and monitoring through the homeless program office at the local level, up is to the happening? national level. It's happening. I don't think that it's perfect because it's very difficult to identify 100% who's at risk within 30 to 60 uh, days. Uh, we had a situation that we faced this week where uh, I assisted along with uh, some other colleagues, a veteran and his spouse who found out within five days that they were losing their home. Uh, we put them in direct contact with resources and assistance, but the timing can be very short. There's areas for improvement there, and we're committed to working on them. Okay, well, Congress and, and the VA have been put a lot of effort into reaching out to veterans with the message that it is okay for them to ask for help. Mm -hmm. That when they are feeling alone, when they're feeling depressed, there's people and resources available for them. So it's really concerning to see on the VA's website that the wait time for a mental health appointment at the Puget Sound VA Medical Center is over a month long. 
I've personally had veterans tell me that they've had to wait as long as three months just to get an appointment. I know it's challenging, I know it's com complicated, but what is the VA doing to make sure that veterans who are experiencing a mental health crisis access the care they need when they need it? Same day access is the first step that should be in place at every local facility regarding this. Following same day access, attending to staffing and ensuring that staffing can accommodate the demand. Okay, but it's not happening, so what do we do? Then we, uh, from a national level, we consult, we offer consultation to the local level regarding where they're seeing barriers, where they're seeing impediments to access, and assisting them with constructing a plan, an action plan for following through and making improvements. Okay, can I get you to get in touch with the Puget Sound VA Medical Center and find out why these wait times are so long and follow up on what we're going to do to fix it? Absolutely. Thank you.